What if you had the rare incurable disease that slowly robbed you of your ability to walk, to speak, and to live? And what if after decades with no approved treatments and no hope, a company was finally on the verge of a breakthrough? This is the story of Biohabit, ticker BHVN, and their fight to deliver the first ever therapy for devastating neurological condition called spinocerebellar ataxia. This company is led by the exact same team that built and sold a blockbuster migraine franchise to Pfizer for $11.6 billion. And now their most important catalyst is here. The FDA is just months away from making a decision that could change everything for thousands of patients and determine the future of this company. So today, let's break down the disease the drug, the crucial trial data, and the high stakes bet that is biohaven. Biotech breakthrough stuns medical world. This is the pill that could change everything. To understand the opportunity, you first need to understand the disease, spinocerebellar ataxia, or most known as SCA. Imagine your brain is a command center, and the cerebellum is the part that coordinates all your movements, walking, talking, balance, everything. In SCA, this command center slowly and relentlessly degenerates. Patients typically in the prime of their lives gradually lose their balance, their speech becomes slurred, they begin to fall over time. This progresses to a complete loss of ambulation, requiring a wheelchair, and can lead to severe disability and premature death. It is a very cruel, inherited disease that affects approximately 15,000 people in the United States, and currently there are zero FDA-approved treatments. Biohaven's drug, Troriluzole, aims to change that. It's a once daily pill designed to protect the brain from further damage. And it works by modulating glutamate, which is the most abundant excitatory chemical messenger in the brain. In SCA, excess glutamate becomes toxic to nerve cells. Troliluzole helps clear this excess glutamate from the spaces between neurons, reducing toxicity and potentially slowing the destruction of the cerebellum. So it is not a cure, it is just slowing down the disease. So proving that a drug can slow a slowly progressing disease is incredibly difficult. It requires a long, expensive trial. So Biohaven, in discussions with the FDA, took an innovative approach. Instead of traditional multi-year placebo-controlled study, Biohaven designed a real-world evidence study. They took data from patients treated with troliluzole from three years in their clinical trial program. Then, they compared their results to external control groups. Data collected from hundreds of untreated SCA patients from independent third-party natural history studies in both the United States and Europe. To ensure a fair comparison, they used a statistical method called propensity score matching. This method matched each treated patient with untreated patients who had nearly identical baseline characteristics, the same age, the same gender, disease severity, and even genetic profiles. This created kind of a virtual control group, allowing them to isolate the effect of the drug over a three-year period. The primary goal was to measure the change in a scale called F. SARA. The F-SARA or functional scale for the assessment and rating of ataxia was developed with FDA's input and measures the four core symptoms of the disease. Gait, stance, sitting, and speech. A higher score means the disease is worse. In untreated patients, this score reliably worsens year after year. The question was, could troliluzole slow that decline? And the results were striking. The study met its primary endpoint and the data was consistent and robust. Across three years, patients treated with troliluzole showed a 50% to 70% slower rate of disease progression compared to the matched untreated patients. I know this is a lot of information, but let's break that down. When compared to the U.S. natural history cohort, troliluzole treated patients saw a 50% slowing of their disease. 
and when comparing to an independent European cohort, the effect was even greater, a 70% slowing of the disease progression. What this means in real-world terms is even more important. This slowing of decline translates to a 1.5 to 2 year delay in worsening of a disease over a 3 year period study. These are years where a patient might maintain the ability to walk without assistance, to communicate clearly, and to remain independent. Furthermore, a separate analysis showed that troliluzole substantially reduced the risk of falls which is a major cause of injury and disability in SCA. The drug was also found to be safe and well tolerated over the eight-year development program. So armed with this evidence, BioHaven submitted their application to the FDA. And this brings us to the main event. The FDA accepted BioHaven's application and granted it priority review a designation reserved for drugs that could provide a significant improvement in the treatment of a serious condition. The agency has set a decision deadline, known as a PDUFA date for the fourth quarter of this year, 2025. And this is the moment of truth. If approved, troriluzole would become the first and only FDA-approved treatment for SCA, addressing a complete and met medical need for the 15,000 patients in the U.S., and thousands more worldwide. A successful launch in a rare disease with no competition could generate hundreds of millions of dollars in revenue, providing the financial foundation for the rest of BioHaven's pipeline. It would validate their innovative trial design and establish the company as a leader in neurological rare diseases. An ambitious goal like this requires a leadership team with a proven track record of success. And this is arguably BioHaven's biggest strength. The company is led by Chairman and CEO Dr. Vlad Korik. Dr. Korik is not just an executive, he is a physician scientist with over 20 years of drug development experience. Splitting his career between academic research at Yale School of Medicine and Big Pharma at Bristol Myers Squibb, he remains an associate clinical professor of psychiatry at Yale and has authored more than 65 scientific publications giving him deep credibility in the neuroscience field. But the strength of BioHaven isn't just a single person. Dr. Korik has surrounded himself with a team of seasoned experts. Their chief financial officer, Matthew Button, brings over 20 years of Wall Street experience in healthcare, investing, and investment banking, having held senior roles at firms like Foresight Capital and Nedham and & Company. Guiding the science is chief scientific officer, Dr. Bruce Carr a veteran drug developer who previously served as CSO at Agios Pharmaceuticals and has a long track record of advanced novel medicines. So this is largely the same core team that built the first BioHaven, which is another company. They discovered the migraine drug Nurtec ODT, took it from an idea all the way through FDA approval and built it into a blockbuster. They then sold that franchise to Pfizer in 2022 for $11.6 billion in cash, delivering a huge return for shareholders. They immediately spun out the rest of the pipeline into this new biohaven, armed with significant cash and the experience of having already built a successful biotech company from the ground up. So this isn't a team learning on the job. They are seasoned drug developers and deal makers. This past success provides a level of credibility that few companies at this stage possess. So let's get to the financials and the balance sheet because this is where the story gets a little tense. As of June 30, 2025, BioHaven had approximately 408 million in cash and marketable securities. Their net loss for the second quarter was almost 200 million. That is a high burn rate. It reflects the cost of running a very ambitious organization, but it also means their cash runway is short, currently less than a year. This puts immense pressure on the upcoming FDA decision. To manage this, the company has pursued a two-pronged funding strategy. First, they've secured a non-dilutive capital. In April, they announced a financing agreement with Oberland Capital for up to $600 million, drawing an initial $250 million. Crucially, another $150 million is available at the company's option if Troriluzo is approved. Second, they have raised money through public offerings, which dilutes 
existing shareholders. A significant offering in late 2024 brought in approximately $270 million. As of their last quarterly filing, the company had approximately 105 million shares outstanding. Now, with this in mind, let's speculate on valuation to keep things focused on the main catalyst. These scenarios are driven primarily by the Trorilozol outcome and apply a simplified valuation to the rest of Biohaven's extensive pipeline. First, the bull case. The FDA approves Trorilozol and the launch is a major success exceeding expectations. Let's assume peak annual sales reach 600 million and applying a seven times price to sales ratio, which is in line with successful rare disease launches, gives Trolilozole an implied valuation of 4.2 billion. Adding an increased value for the risk pipeline, this scenario could support a total market cap of around 6.2 billion. Based on 105.8 million shares, this translates to a price target of approximately $59 per share. That's the optimistic case. Now, let's go with the base case. The FDA approves Troriluzole, and let's assume the drug achieves conservative peak annual sales of roughly 400 million, applying a five times price to sales ratio, which is conservative for a rare disease drug with no competition, gives Troriluzole an implied valuation of $2 billion. Adding the value of the rest of their pipeline, this scenario could support a total market cap of around $3.1 billion. This translates to a price target of approximately $29 per share, which doesn't seem that crazy. And now, the bear case. The FDA rejects the application. This would be a devastating setback with no near-term revenue. The company high cash burn becomes a major concern. So the company's value would likely fall sharply, trading closer to its cash position, plus heavily discounted value for its remaining pipeline. In this scenario, the market cap could fall to around 750 million. This would imply a price target of approximately $7 per share. And this brings us to the final verdict on Biohaven. The investment thesis is now sharply focused on a single binary event. The bull case is compelling. You have a drug that has shown a clinically meaningful ability to slow a terrible progressive disease with no other options. It is led by a management team that has already delivered a grand slam for investors. An approval would be a monumental win for patients and a financial game changer for the company. The Burr case is centered on regulatory risk. The use of real-world evidence for a primary endpoint is still relatively new, and FDA's decision will set a precedent in this case. A negative outcome would be a major blow, questioning the viability of their lead asset and forcing a hard pivot. Ultimately, Biohaven represents a classic high-stakes biotech play. The science is sound, the unmet need is undeniable, and the team is proven. The company's future now hinges on a single question. Will the FDA agree that the evidence is strong enough? We will find out in the fourth quarter of 2025. Of course, this is not financial advice and you should always do your own research. What are your thoughts on Biohaven and the upcoming FDA decision? Let us know in the comments below. And if you found this breakdown helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe for more deep dives into the world of biotech. I'll see you in the next one.